Welcome everybody, it's me, Aaron the Artist. Let's paint a nice easy landscape today. I'll show you all the steps, all the brushes, all the colours. The whole thing, so if you want to paint along with me, you could get similar results to mine. Or you can just relax and hang out. Anyway, you can see all the colours I'm going to use here in the top left of my canvas. And I'm going to start by dropping in that vivid sky blue, filling up the whole canvas. To create the sky, I use the basic Procreate soft brush at a pretty big size and just start to glaze in some of that teal colour, and then underneath that, some of the baby blue. We want the sky to gradually get lighter from top to bottom. There are a few different ways to do it, but the soft brush works just fine for me. To paint our mountains, I want to switch to the flat brush and use that dark blue to paint in the silhouette. The exact shape doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong shape here. I try to keep it looking natural, but you can do wackier shapes if you want. We're not going to worry about all the details yet. We can come back to the detail once we've got the basic composition decided. So let's just drop in some grass for now, still with that flat brush. Grab one of the lighter greens and lay it in softly so that you get some bolder and some lighter parts, and a few brush strokes showing to create texture. Maybe throw in a little bit of that dark green as well. And let's just leave it there for now, come back to it in a bit. Let's make a new layer underneath our mountains and paint some clouds with the soft brush. Notice the opacity setting for my brush here. It's quite low, and that's so that I can easily go over an area multiple times to build up a stronger colour, and leave some areas very faint by just going over them once. A soft brush setup like this really easily creates that fuzzy cloud texture. You're going to want to paint in light circular motions as you build up your clouds. One way to think of clouds is as made up of lots of different sized spheres all joined together. So you want to paint in circular motions to capture the spheres, and have highlight and shadow in a similar way to a sphere. Of course, they don't want to be perfect spheres, clouds are much more organic and smushy than that. But it's a simple way to think about what's going on. Now we've got a nice overall shape to the clouds here, but I want to add a little bit more drama to them with a deeper shadow. So let's grab that darker blue from our cloud palette, and I'm just going to deepen those shadows using the same circular motions as before, until we've got a real 3D effect going. Alright, time to move forward. Make a new layer above those mountains and set it to Clipping Mask. That makes sure everything we paint on this layer sticks to the mountain range and can't go outside of it. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a greeny blue colour and separate my mountain into two separate mountain ranges, one behind the other. Then we can start adding some shadows to our mountains with a darker blue. I'm doing this with a brush called the Hearts brush, which is a standard brush from Procreate, and you can find it in the artistic section. It just adds a subtle texture to our shadows. Now here's something important. When we painted our clouds, we decided on a light source. All of our shadows are on the right side of the clouds, meaning our light is coming in from the left somewhere, and we need to stick with that 
when putting in our mountain shadows. They don't have to be in any very specific places, because mountains can take very random shapes. But try to imagine that light coming in and striking the mountain from the left hand side. There's no particular technique to this, just use the hearts brush and play around making different shapes until you get something that looks interesting. One trick is to vary the size of the shadows, so that you've got some big, some small, and some medium sized sections. If you struggle coming up with the right shapes, try looking at a photo of a mountain, it should give you a good idea. I'm going to add a bit of highlight colour to those front mountains as well, just so that they appear a bit more detailed than the ones behind. To create depth in your paintings, one thing you can do is give things more and more detail the closer they are to the viewer, so that's that. Tell you what, let's move on from those mountains now and add a few little trees just in front of them. Make a new layer on top of the grass for this. Then with one of our tree greens and the flat brush, make a couple of little scribbles here and there. Now I don't quite like the colour there, so I'm going to adjust it with the hue, saturation and brightness sliders. Make them quite a bit darker and then I can paint on top with my original green to create a few highlights. That looks better. We need to build up a richer texture in the grass now, but I don't want to paint every single blade of grass because that won't look all too nice. And besides, I'm a lazy painter, I like to find shortcuts. So using the different greens I chose for the grass palette, I'm just mixing them all together on my field, making the grass generally lighter at the back and darker as it comes forward. Now for some fun, go into the spray paint section and grab the Flix brush. We're going to use it to suggest some flowers. Using the yellow, I'm just spattering it around the field in random places, gradually increasing my brush size as I come forward. We can mix in some white and grey flowers as well. You could hand paint all of these dots one at a time if you want, using the flat brush, and that can actually create quite an interesting effect. But this is the quick way of doing it. When you're happy with the flowers, I want to start adding some individual grass blades. Now I know we said we won't paint all of them, and I still mean that, but we do need to paint some of them just to give the impression of grass and we can leave the rest to the viewer's imagination. There are a few things to keep in mind as we paint those blades. First, we need to vary the colour of the blades to make it look more interesting. So we have some lighter blades, some darker blades, some more yellow blades, and the like of that. Second, you're generally going to be better off putting more detailed grass right up close to the viewer, and then gradually adding less and less grass as we go further back. Again, creates a bit of depth. One of the most difficult things to learn about painting grass is how visible it should be. If your blades of grass are too similar to the base colour of the grass, you won't be able to see them at all, and that's a waste of time. But if you make the colour too different, the blades stick out too much and feel like plastic. The trick is to pick colours that are just about visible if you look at the grass directly. But still, colours that sort of blend into the base colour if you're focusing on, say, the sky. It's a tough balance to get for sure. 
The last tip I can give you for painting grass is a Studio Ghibli trick. When you paint individual blades, we know we don't want to place them all over the place, because that'll look ridiculous. So where do we put them? Well, if you look at a lot of Ghibli paintings, you'll see that they often put lots of blades of grass right at the edge of a shadow. And you can see that's just what I've focused on doing here. My mountains are just a little bit too bold. Just gonna knock them back a bit by glazing over them with the sky color. With a painting like this one, the more things recede back in space, the more they start to blend into the color of the sky. That's called atmospheric perspective. We're almost there now. Let's add a few simple buildings along that mountain line using the gray. They don't need to be detailed, just house-shaped smudges and a few sticks maybe for telephone poles and things like that. You know what? I don't quite like the color of those clouds. It's easy enough to make some adjustments if everything is still on separate layers. First, I'm using the color balance tool to shift the shadow color to more closely reflect the sky behind. Then I'll use the curves tool to just pull the contrast up a bit. Makes the shadows darker and the highlights lighter. It's all just little tweaks from here to get things just right. I want to add quite a lot more flowers with the Flix brush, and I'd like to see that sky blue used somewhere other than the sky. So I grab the flat brush and hand paint in some baby blue flowers in the foreground. With this style of painting, you really don't need to be that great at painting anything in particular. I haven't painted a single detailed flower in this whole thing. It's mostly just scribbling in the right places to get the composition and the colours right. And then you let the viewer's interpretation fill in all the rest. It's an easy style, lots of fun to do. Of course, the main feature of this painting that I have put detail into is that dramatic sky. So to finish up the painting, let's get back to that. This time I'm using a completely pure white to add some really strong highlights to my clouds, as well as brushing in a few smaller clouds breaking away. You can also use the smudge tool to add a kind of fuzzy feeling to the edge of your clouds, but be careful not to overdo it because you don't want the whole thing to turn into mush. You want a mix of soft edges and hard edges to your clouds. These little birds here are done with a special flock of birds brush. It isn't a basic Procreate brush, but I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want some easy birds. We're basically done at this point, but I want to add something real cinematic to draw your attention. So we're going to use a bold orange that we haven't used anywhere else to add a gust of leaves blowing across the scene. The point is to grab someone's attention with a strong contrasting colour and then lead them across and through the scene. All I did was draw the leaves with the freehand selection tool, and then filled in the orange with a brush. Again, make sure you get some big leaves, some medium leaves, some small leaves. One final trick. When something is really close to your eye, or to a camera lens, it often appears blurry and out of focus. That can look really nice with foreground elements like this, and creates a lot of depth. All you have to do is go into adjustments, Find your Gaussian Blur tool, and then set how much blur you want. I like a subtle amount. Well, anyway, that's us now. If you enjoyed this, do all those things for me so that I know to make more of them in the future. And have a nice day.